Hey guys, I'm Mike, welcome back to the channel. This is Mike Tech Builds. So usually, I'll be in here, this is my log cabin, I'll be making something out of wood for you guys. So usually it'd be a birdhouse or a jewelry box or another birdhouse. We do like making birdhouses on this channel. We do like making homes for the birds. Uh, so, uh, having said that, this is a wood and DIY channel. So I've been waiting a very long time to do some DIY work with you. Um, I am a carpenter by trade and I do like doing building work as well. So everything I do in the video, uh, I'll be trying to show you uh, how I do it and hopefully you'll learn some DIY skills from me and that'll rub off on you, saving yourself some money uh, when you want to do some DIY in your own home. So this is my bedroom. Uh, as you can see, I've stripped it all. All the wall, all the wallpapers come off the walls. Uh, all the carpets come up. So we'll be doing a full refurb in this room from start to finish. Uh, so having said that, we are going to start with the electrics, and I'll be running through with you what tools we'll need, and basically how we're going to get going with this bedroom. So we've all said that. Uh, let's get started. So to get started, uh, we're going to need some tools. Um, if you've got any sockets up high, we're going to need a six foot level. Uh, you're going to want a small two foot level. You're going to need some back boxes. Uh, so we're either going to need metal back boxes for block work, or if you've got plasterboarded walls, you're going to need some dry lining boxes. Uh, you're going to want a electrical metal detector, uh, a tape measure, and a pencil. Um, so the reason why I asked you to get one of these, um, it's just in case if there's anything behind the walls that we don't know about. Uh, this has helped me out quite a few times um, when someone said there's uh, pipes in the walls for radiators um, or if you've got a boiler nearby, someone's had to redirect the pipes behind the walls that you don't know about. Um, just in case, just run this over the wall, it'll pick up any metal, if there's any current from the electrics in the walls, um, and also it'll pick up uh, timber that's in the walls as well, if you've got to pick up any stud walls, uh, stud work for your plasterboarding. Uh, so wherever you're going to be marking your electrics, make sure you run this over the wall just in case uh, because once we start drilling through the walls, you're going to get very soaked or you might get a bit of a shock. Right, so we're going to be discussing how we can get the height of your sockets. Um, like this one in the wall, this is already in the wall. This is a, um, a dud, so that's why we'll be replacing it with a new one and we'll be changing uh, more around the room to add more electrics into the rooms. Um, so all we'll do to determine the height of our socket is basically to get a tape measure and measure it to the screws and that'll give our centre mark to our socket. Also, um, if you wanted to change the height of these, if you wanted to make them lower or higher, by all means, but also what you need to consider is the skirting board. So if you've got skirting ball going just so high underneath the socket, you don't want your socket touching it because when you put a plug in it, it might catch the skirting and you won't be able to use any electrics. Um, so just always be mindful, if you know the height of your skirting, just leave it two or three inches for your sockets to go above. Um, or if you've got sockets in the other rooms that you'd like it to match the rest of the house, uh, just go into your other rooms measure from the floor up to the screws. Uh, in this case, we've got 350 millimeters. And all I'm gonna do is pencil around 350 millimeters, and then I know that is the middle of the socket. So if you're like me and you like watching telly in bed, uh, going to sleep at night, or if you're like me, I'll fall asleep while watching the telly and wake up three o'clock in the morning and I'll have to turn it off and then go back to sleep. Always the way in it. Uh, but if you're going to put it on a bedside unit, you haven't got to worry about this. But with me, I'm going to be putting it on the wall uh, on a swivel so I can swivel it round uh, so I can watch it in my bed. So once you've determined uh, the height of your telly on the wall, I'll just put a bit of tape on the wall that'll determine what height I'm going to put the telly on. And then what you're going to want to do, you want to get the bracket for your TV, mount it on it, and work out what space you've got for your socket to fit behind it. So what I've done with my telly, I've marked out the top of the telly, and I've got a bit of space just underneath, so I've come down 200mm, 
and put another bit of green tape and that is where my socket's trying to go on the wall. So we know where our back box is going. So once that comes from there, you can see I've drawn around it. And then also you've no you'll notice that I've put an extra line on the wall and this is where our cable will go into the wall and into the back box. And in these back boxes, you can see these little circles, they actually pop out. And then what we do, we put like a little rubber grommet in that for the cable to go through into our socket. So this line here is what you want to mark out is that's where we're going to chase out the wall. So regarding back boxes, uh, just bear in mind they come in different depths. Uh, you can get really shallow ones or you can get really thick, deep ones. Uh, these are medium sized ones, uh, they're in the middle. Um, I've got skinny walls, so I've got to be careful when I chase out my back box that I don't go through to the other side. Um, if you've got nice thick walls, you can use a, a deeper back box and then you've got plenty of room for your cable to sit in the back box nicely when it goes into the back of the socket. To chase out the walls, we're going to need some tools. In an ideal world, a wall chaser is perfect because we can set the depth of the cable in a little bit more and it'll go through. It's attached to our Henry who takes up all the dust and it hardly leaves any dust in the room. Failing that, I've used a mini angle grinder in the past with this little attachment, which is great which my Hoover can still attach to the attachment and takes away the dust. Um, protection, I've always used top of the range dust mask, earplugs just for the noise, and a pair of safety glasses. So our next part, we're going to chisel out the groove we've made in the wall and also we're going to chisel out the bit where the back box is going to go into. So to do this, ideally you'd want an SDS drill with a chisel bit, but if you haven't got this, we can get away with a, a hammer and bolster. Um, and then also if you haven't got the SDS bit, you can get away with a normal drill with a drill bit. I'll show you how we're going to use that in a minute. And then also health and safety, we're going to have a dust mask and some goggles because when we're chiseling out, we don't want anything to go in our eyes. For us to get our back box in the wall, what we're going to do is we'll drill a series of holes the same depth as our back box. So in order to do this, all we're going to do is measure the thickness of the back box, get a little bit of tape, and all you're going to do is tape it round the drill bit and then that thickness is how much you want to go into the wall. So that's our back boxes on the wall, ready for the cables. Um, we'll be doing that in another video because I'm going to take up the floorboards and show you how to fit new flooring. Uh, once the floorboards come up, we're going to insulate it, run all new cables uh, into our boxes. I'll show you how we do all that. 
Um, but that's all we have time for for today. If you've liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't done already, subscribe to the channel. Much more content to come for this bedroom build. Um, as always, thank you for making the time to watch my videos. Much, much appreciated. Hope you have a nice day and I'll see you in the next one.